Hello everybody, my name is Brendan Mitchell and if you are watching this it is because you have registered for the Flipped Classroom Breakout Session at Edutech 2017. The purpose of this particular video is to give you the basic information that you need to know why we flip and also what a flipped classroom looks like. The reason we want to do it this way is to actually replicate how a flipped classroom actually operates so that when you come to the breakout session we can go hands on and practical and we can uh, really go a lot deeper around talking about how you can flip, talking about tools and strategies and techniques so that when you go back to your school you can dive right in. The first thing that I want to talk about is actually why we should flip. Now the main purpose of flipped learning is to give students more time for active learning in class because there's a significant body of research that demonstrates that this has learning gains compared to just the traditional lecture. The driving question behind flipped learning is what is the most valuable use of your face-to-face -face time with students? The answer is probably not going through explicit instruction. The answer is probably having students engaged in active learning and you supporting them in that so they can go deeper and they can think more creatively about whatever it is that you are trying to teach them. Now Robert Marzano in 2014 published a body of research that looked at lesson types. Now in this research he had 2 million data points and what he found was that 58% of lesson types were actually just interacting with new content. They were sitting on the remember and understand components of Bloom's taxonomy. Only 36% of lesson types were were going that little bit further, applying and analysing, and only 6% of lessons were in having students engage with cognitively complex tasks, uh, evaluate and create. Now if you are thinking, well if I flip my classroom, surely that means I flip Bloom's taxonomy, and that's a fairly logical assumption. However, John Bergman has commented that flipping Bloom's taxonomy uh, is actually more akin to a PhD study. The way that we should probably be thinking about Bloom's taxonomy in a flipped classroom context is something like this. We are still having students remember and understand. That is still important. We are still having students evaluate and create. That is also important. But the bulk of the group learning space time should be spent in applying and analysing the new concepts, the knowledge or the skills that we are teaching them. So I suppose you, you may be thinking, well, what is a flipped classroom if it's not something that you've come across before? The basic premise behind flipped learning is that it moves the explicit instruction from the group learning space commonly the classroom, to the individual learning space, commonly home. Now what this does is that it takes the group learning space from being often a passive, a passive time of simply hearing the new knowledge that they need to learn, the traditional lecture, and it turns it into a dynamic, interactive, active learning space where you as the teacher are available and able to guide students as they engage more deeply and more creatively in the subject matter that they are learning about. Let's consider how this looks like comparatively. In a traditional classroom, the content delivery, the direct instruction, is generally done in the group learning space by a lecture with the teacher at the front of the room. And the follow-up activities, the homework, the assessment tasks, the deeper uh, thinking, the higher order thinking skills are generally sent home as homework. The problem with this is that if the student goes home and they can't remember how to engage with the content, they can't remember how to complete the tasks, and there's no one able to help them, well, they can't go further, they have to wait until they get back to school and they can ask you. In a flipped classroom, however, the content delivery happens at home prior to the lesson. It's usually done through a micro video or a, uh, a text reading of some sort, and then the group learning space is then full of deeper learning, is full of hands-on practical activities where students are applying and analysing what they have learned in the individual learning space. You as the teacher are then freed up from having to provide that direct instruction, that explicit instruction, and you can then engage with students, supporting them, extending them, and giving them the guidance that they need to go deeper with the subject matter. How you can flip will depend on your context. In terms of the video side of things, you need to think about whether you want to curate or create, and there are arguments for both. And if you are going to be flipping by using readings, then you need to think about what kind of readings. And there's nothing wrong with using a mixture. Again, the way that you flip is going to depend on your particular context. Now, in terms of the workflow, it might look something like this. There's no right or wrong way. However, this is the workflow model that works, seems to work for the majority of teachers. You need to have some way of presenting your teaching. You need to have some way of capturing that. 
you will want somewhere to host the micro video and the best learning will come from the video if it is interactive i.e. if there are questions embedded in the video that students need to respond to. The LMS that you use is obviously going to be dependent on your particular school context and the way that you engage in assessment will vary as well. If you're using ClickView then you can get the assessment data direct from ClickView on particular video interactives, uh, otherwise you will use your school structure to engage students in the assessment process. So what's next? We want to engage with you in the breakout session in a hands-on practical manner. We actually want to spend a lot of time talking about tools, strategies, techniques and subject examples for how to flip and we would actually like to have you engaging in that and potentially creating some content that you can take back and put into place in your classroom. As part of your preparation, I'd like you to visit uh, the tinyurl.com forward slash template FL, which is a lesson plan template for planning a flipped lesson. It will help you to think about what you need to consider providing students prior as part of their pre-learning as well as how you are going to engage with them in the group learning space after they've engaged with that. It will help you to consider various things that you need to have in place to make that group learning space uh, more useful and more beneficial for students learning. If you're able to, please bring a laptop with a webcam and a microphone. As well, please have Screencast-O-Matic uh, either download and downloaded and installed or be able to use it from your web browser. Additionally, to help you get started, there are two other links there that provide you with additional information the flip start tiny URL link sends you to a page which has a list of resources of links of reviews from Flipcon articles from previous years that will give you more information more background and will also help you connect with other educators interested in flipped learning the flipped cert tiny URL link will actually take you to the FL global flipped certification program which is around about eight to ten hours worth of time but is absolutely worthwhile in engaging with Feel free to engage with me on Twitter. I am at C21 underscore teaching. I look forward to seeing you at the Edutech breakout session. Please come prepared with something that you plan to teach uh, early next term that we can work with you to help you flip that particular concept or skill. Until we see you then, thanks very much.